Since 1989, self-styled biblical archaeologist Ron Wyatt of Tennessee has become, beyond his grave, the leading proponent of the idea that some whitish formations just northwest of Masada are, in fact, the ruins of the biblical Gomorrah, a city said in Genesis to have been destroyed by God in the early 2nd millennium BC. Remains of towers, ziggurats, windows, and walls have been identified by the Wyattists as being proof of the veracity of the biblical tale of the consumption of the cities of the plain by fire and brimstone. Sodom and Gomorrah, the cities of the plain. In Genesis 19, we read how these cities were destroyed by God with brimstone and fire from heaven, the first biblical record of God's vengeance upon evil since the Great Flood. My husband, biblical archaeologist Ron Wyatt, never planned to search for these cities. But in 1989, while working on another project, he was suddenly impressed to stop and examine some odd-shaped, whitish-colored formations along the western shore of the Dead Sea. After driving past these at least 30 or 40 times in the past 12 years, this time they suddenly looked like the shapes of city walls and buildings. So, why hasn't scholarship even acknowledged this supposedly decisively convincing discovery? Why has it not been published in any scholarly archaeological journals? You'll see why toward the end of this video. Let us firstly look at the biblical narrative. In Genesis 13, 10 to 12, Lot chooses to live in the plain of the Jordan. In the Bible, the Jordan is always the Jordan River, never, as the widest would say, the southwestern side of the Dead Sea. Let us now look at a satellite image of Ron Wyatt's proposed site for Gomorrah. What does it appear to be? If you answered a collection of wadis running through an area of exposed whitish rock, you would be somewhat reasonably accurate. If you answered ancient building remains, you would not be close to correct. As we entered the open section, we soon found ourselves walking along very distinctive paths which communicated with one another just as our streets today. As we approached what appeared to be a dead end, we found it turned to the right and continued along until it met another street. There was distinct order here. These were clearly once streets. Do these look like streets to you? The ruins of large areas of ancient cities with streets, public buildings, and city walls may be seen in numerous places in Google Earth, including at Masada, Jericho, Megiddo, Hazor, Tel Beersheba, Bet Shemesh, and Kirbet Kweafa, and they look nothing like what either the exposed streets or buildings of Wyatt's Gomorrah look from above. Let us see what analysis from ground level shows us about these formations. Look carefully. What do you see? That's right. You see layers. Layers of what, might you be asking? Now think carefully about what these formations might be. Hint, no pottery was found in them. No jewelry, rooms, or solid walls, whether of stone or mud brick, were found in them. No terracotta idols, or graves, or tools, or... Let's just cut right to the chase. If you answered wind and water carved layers of prehistoric Dead Sea sediments, you are correct. If one actually checks the scholarly literature, one can easily find these formations mentioned in numerous places. From there, one can conclude that these formations are composed of sediments of Lake Kalisan, a predecessor of the modern Dead Sea which existed between 70,000 and 14,000 years ago. The layers are composed of dust and aragonite, and the sulfur nodules found were formed by sulfur oxidizing bacteria. The swirling effect found in some parts of the formations was a result of prehistoric earthquake activity. Thus, Ron Wyatt's Gomorrah is simply a result of what is likely deliberate ignorance of geology and archaeology. 
Thank you for watching.